Our next uh, speaker is uh, Mr. Travis Mingo, who is the Associate Director of Vessel Operations and uh, Captain of the RV Spirit of the Sound, uh, operated by the Maritime Aquarium at Norfolk. Uh, the title of his talk is Practical Application of a Hybrid System in a 19-Meter Research Vessel. Uh, Travis Mingo is the Associate Director of Vessel Operations at the uh, Maritime Aquarium at Norwalk and lead captain on the RV Spirit of the Sound. Originally from the Pacific Northwest in Alaska, he has recently retired from the U.S. Coast Guard after 20 years of service and now resides in Wallingford, Connecticut. Mr. Mingo. Well, good afternoon. Um, so the RV Spirit of the Sound, it's the uh, very first hybrid uh, vessel, uh, research vessel. Um, Maritime Aquarium, we had a problem. In 2011, it was identified that we needed to replace the aging 41-foot RV Oceanic. Uh, she was a diesel um, lop, main lobster vessel. Um, and we needed to go to a green technology. Uh, the, we wanted to ex expand the capabilities on this boat, add educational re and additional research programming, and uh, expand our passenger accounts. The solution was uh, a directive from the board um, and in line with the mission of the aquarium to find a hybrid system or a green system. Um, we, they wanted an additional larger platform so we could develop new programs uh, and increase our passenger count from 30 to 60. Uh, we also were going to seek additional federal, state, and private research projects. I have a little video. Whoops. a 65-foot catamaran research vessel. We've been working on this project for about five years now, from design to construction and delivery. It's a research vessel that's uh, allowing about 10,000 students a year to come out and study Long Island Sound. And a uh, hybrid propulsion system, no emissions, very green vessel that we've designed and built at Director Shipyard over the past two years. We're really thrilled to have a boat that's going to be quiet, that will use 75% less energy um, than our old vessel and, and will carry more than twice the number of kids. So it's quite a boat for us, the spirit of the sound. Two of the major components of our mission are to educate people about Long Island Sound and to protect Long Island Sound. And so having a vehicle that represents the most modern technology, but also the greenest technology, allows us to do that in a, in a beautiful way. It supports our mission. This is a, a lithium polymer uh, hybrid system that is unlike anything that's out there right now. Uh, it's the first of its kind on a research boat. Um, this is our first experience with a hybrid vessel. Uh, and so far it's been a positive one. Uh, we hope to be building a lot more of these types of vessels uh, and continually improving on the hybrid system as we go. Take the system as it's applied on the bus and translate it and integrate it into a boat. So 
as a system, when you take a look at it, all the hardware is the same. It's easy to say it's a cut and paste from what goes on the bus to what goes on the boat, because if we take into the engine room and start to point out the components, it looks exactly as if we're in the engine compartment in the bus. So there's a, a tremendous foundation of, of that intellectual property that has continued to grow. Um, and, and that's the technical heart of why we're here. Um, and then when you take all the lessons learned that we've uh, accumulated over the years, since the, the, the early to mid 90s to where we are today, those lessons learned are also applied. So that's more of the systems integration role. So when you couple the intellectual property and that strength of what we've developed technically with the lessons learned in our sound systems engineering process, you put that together and, and that's why uh, we're a good partner. We were tasked by the people that were making the charitable contributions to build the boat, to build the greenest vessel that we could. We took technology from BAE Hybrid that was used in 2,500 buses across the United States to make that technology applicable to a marine uh, propulsion system application. When you get on this boat, the system doesn't necessarily behave as it does on the bus. It, it actually is more of a true variable speed gen set or gen, you know, power generator that has uh, batteries for uh, the primary energy source. When we came into, uh, into Norwalk first on Wednesday night, um, I think everyone was in a little bit of shock because they couldn't hear anything as the boat was pulling in. Uh, so every comment we've gotten so far is, turn your engines on. Uh, and you know, we respond in the same easy manner as they are on. So the technology, uh, it's a 19 meter in-cat Crowther hull. Uh, it's proven passenger ferry design. Um, we, they used a Northern Lights generator for uh, generation, uh, with, which is truly just a proven John Deere block. Um, the BAE system is a hyperdrive system that's been pulled out of numerous buses, or there, there's numerous buses using it, over 5,000 currently. Um, it's adaptable to nearly any scale power source. Corvus Energy, uh, that's who provided our energy storage system. Um, it's safe, it, it's expandable, sealed, and it has greater than 8,000 uh, cycles life expectancy. Uh, the RV Spirit of Sound is 64 feet long, 21 foot beam. Um, the draft is four feet and 28 feet tall. Uh, generation propulsion, Northern Lights MH1064 generator with integrated starter uh, generation. Uh, 173 horsepower, 200 kW. Um, it's a BAE TB200 AC traction motor, it's three phase. Uh, 265 peak horsepower and 3,760 feet-pounds of torque. Um, it has instant power uh, with incredible response, when you, just like uh, turning on an electric motor. 
they actually had to introduce additional programming into the uh, system to make sure we didn't twist a shaft. Uh, the energy storage system, it's Corvus Energy out of uh, Canada. They are AP 6500 modules. There's, we have seven per side, 14 total. Um, you can consider these battery banks as your generator and your prime mover uh, for your propulsion. Each battery pack has 100 volts, um, so 700 volts per side, 75 amp hours per module, and 45 and a half total kW per side. Um, these are expandable up to 1,500 modules. That's quite a battery bank. <clears throat> this is a line diagram of our system. Uh, in short, generator provides power to our battery uh, to our battery bank. That power is then stored. Generator shuts off. Everything else is powered off that battery bank. Our house power our HVAC systems, the propulsion itself is powered from that. Being the first one, we've had our issues. Uh, first of its kind, um, we've had winter operations, uh, integration, and then the myths. Um, some of the issues with the integration, we've had some alarm, alarm management, uh, system configurations, and the programming glitches. This is, we've had to work constantly at, with the developers, and they have been excellent. I'm not going to take that away from them at all um, to make sure that these are all working correctly. Our winter operations, the batteries cannot be charged below 32 degrees. Uh, it creates plating within the battery system itself and therefore degrades the battery. Not very conducive to operations in the Northeast. Uh, we are currently working and have a way forward with a battery warming system, and that should be online this summer. Uh, in the news, you, you hear a lot about the lithium battery issues. Uh, most recently, it's been the hoverboards. That gave a little bit of fear to our donors. Uh, this vessel was completely built off donor funds, um, and a few of them were really worried about that lithium-ion power. Uh, Corvus Energy has produced uh, some great ways to reduce and manage the events uh, of fire or thermal events or runaways. Uh, we have five stages of fire mitigation and four different stages of thermal event, event management. And over time, these safety records will start to improve and people will trust the technology a little more. Our sampling gear and the research we conduct, we have a 200 foot small otter trawl. We have a bio dredge, uh, we do benthic grabs, plankton trawls, water quality, uh, uh, marine mammal and bird observations, and we do have an, a small little ROV that we use for uh, marine archaeology. Practicality. Number one is savings. We have reduced our runtime and our of our generation down to a quarter less than what we were running on our last vessel. Um, that reduces our fuel uh, fuel usage. We're down to 75% reduced use in our fuel. Uh, currently, our fuel economy is averaging 2.8 gallons per hour, hour of operation. Uh, and in the summertime, that drops further because we do more of what we call our marine life study cruises, which is a much slower speed. And that drops it down to 2.3 gallons per hour of uh, operation. Um, and that can even be further reduced by allowing for a shoreside charging system. Currently, right now, we do not have that. Uh, noise control. We, we typically run between 60 and 80 decibels on deck, which allows our educators, because we're primarily educational research, uh, they can really communicate with the students and not have any issues. Um, which then, that helps to increase the safety because there's not a lot of yelling over the generators or the propulsion systems. Uh, 
Um, typically, our vessel runs up to 12 knots. We do have some, some cruises or charters that we do up to that speed, but for the most part, everything's done at four knots or below. So what does this mean for anybody who's thinking about a research vessel running a hybrid? You run slow speeds, lays, lakes, bays, and sounds, this would be an ideal platform. The cost savings, the noise, uh, the, f the emissions reduction, it, I think it would really benefit your program. Thank you.